start it now. Yeah. So contraception. What is contraception? Well, first of all, uh, medications used in contraception are, you know, one of the few methods or types of medications which alter the natural physiology of the body. Most with most therapy, you find that there's an ailment, then you treat the ailment with medication. But with contraception, we're actually trying to uh, alter the natural, you know, processes of the body. So, uh, to define contraception, it's any artificial method of uh, preventing conception that is employed by humans. Um, so, any method that you can think of that will prevent uh, having a child will be classified as contraception. So today, we're going to discuss the hormonal methods of contraception as well as the non-hormonal methods of contraception. So, naturally, the, the, the body, well, first of all, uh, contraceptive methods, I must say, are mostly focused on females. So that's something to note. You find that a lot of methods are focused only, mostly, on the female body. How to alter the process of, um, you know, reproduction in the female body. So, naturally, the female uh, will produce two hormones called estrogen and progesterone. So these two hormones act together to uh, in a cycle in the usually 28 day cycle that a, a, an adult female will undergo. So there's a surge of estrogen and then estrogen will drop and there's a surge of progesterone. So estrogen um, is, is the baby hormone. So it promotes, uh, stimulates um, the thickening of the uterus, uh, stimulates um, follicle stimulating hormone in the uh, pituitary gland and the hypothalamus and that hormone uh, stimulates the follicles in the ovaries, hence ovulation occurring. And then progesterone is you know, works to counteract the effects of estrogen. So there's a estrogen surge in the cycle, and then estrogen drops, and there's a progesterone uh, surge. And then the cycle is completed. Again, it begins, it ends, and begins at menstruation, and then proceeds. So most of the hormonal contraceptives that are, you know, synthetically produced act like progesterone in the body, you know, altering the effects of estrogen. There are those which also contain estrogen, which I will go into in a little bit, uh, but most of them, you will note that they are progesterone uh, uh, mimicking hormones that are synthesized. So, like I said earlier, we're going to talk about the hormonal side of uh, methods of contraception as well as non-hormonal uh, methods of contraception. So in the, in the hormonal methods of contraception, you find that uh, there are short-acting methods, intermediate-acting methods, and long-acting methods. So these are employed in different ways as I will explain as we go on. So the shortest acting uh, hormonal contraceptive available out there is the emergency contraception. That's one. So emergency contraception, the drug that is used mostly is levonorgestrel. Uh, the uses of levonorgestrel are three ways. So three ways. One, it prevents ovulation if taken uh, before ovulation has occurred. So this is uh, emergency contraception. I'm sure a lot of us have heard of it. So emergency in that uh, someone, a woman, has had unprotected in sexual intercourse and they're trying to prevent um, pregnancy.
pregnancy. This is somebody who's either not on any other form of contraception or already on another form of contraception, but they need to quickly uh, limit their chances of falling pregnant. So they will employ the emergency contraception, contraceptive rather. So it acts in three ways. One, to prevent uh, ovulation if it hasn't already occurred. Then if ovulation has occurred, it prevents uh, fertilization, meaning the, the sperm meeting with the egg. So it will uh, change um, the environment around the egg such that the sperm won't be able to bind and fertilize the egg. And the third way is if ovulation and fertilization has already occurred when the pill is taken, it will uh, prevent implantation. So after the, the, the sperm and the egg meet um, in the fallopian tube, the egg, the new fertilized egg will, will travel down to the uterus and that's where implantation will happen. But when a woman takes levonorgestrel, that will be prevented. So even um, after fertilization has occurred, this drug can still work and uh, prevent um, the fetus from growing. Yes. So we have to note that the emergency contraceptive should be taken within at least five days. Three days optimum, but even up to five days it's, it, it may work. So the emergency contraceptive is 99% effective if not used in excessiveness. Like some women may treat it like it's a daily pill. So if it's used um, spaced out not too regularly, it is very effective, yes. Uh, common side effects with levonorgestrel in the emergency pill is uh, abdominal pain, headache, uh, sometimes changes in the menstrual cycle. The bleed may come earlier than expected or later than expected. So that is uh, most about the, the emergency pill. So emergency pill is available uh, in 1.5 milligram pill or which is one pill taken at uh, just once or 0 0.75 milligrams which is two pills taken 12 hours apart so those are very much available over the counter it's one of the over the counter drugs that you can buy at any local chemist or pharmacy so that is what you need to know about the emergency pill if there's any questions, might I add, they, you can post them in the comments and I will answer them at the end of the, the lecture. Yes. So that is in the short-acting hormonal contraceptives. So another short-acting hormonal contraceptive is again uh, the daily pill, which again they use, uh, we use levonorgestrel, but 0 0.03 milligram. So this is called the micronized pill. This is what we call the, the mini pill. I'm sure a lot of women have heard of the mini pill. So levonorgestrel 0 0.03 milligrams is the mini pill. So this one is the same drug as in the emergency contraceptive, but micronized, meaning very minimal amounts spread out on a daily basis. So when you spread it out like that, it creates a steady concentration in the woman's body such that it will um, uh, stimulate production of mucus uh, in the cervix, which will block sperm from getting into the uterus and uh, later on fertilizing any possible eggs, eggs that have been, uh, you know, stimulated and um, yeah, ovulated. <laughs> yes, so it will block any sperm from uh, proceeding beyond the cervix. Yes, that's how the mini pill works. So the mini pill, on the mini pill, um, something to note is it is the most preferred in pregnant, in breastfeeding mothers rather, not pregnant, sorry, 
breastfeeding mothers. So it is preferred because it has the least side effects. Um, mostly it would be headache, uh, spontaneous bleeding um, in very few women. Um, uh, some women have experienced abdominal pain at the beginning of the cycle uh, of taking the pills and after they continue taking them, they're they are, they are okay, they don't have many complaints. Um, so, like I said, it's most preferred in breastfeeding mothers, um, you know, uh, yeah. So, just like the emergency pill, it's also 99% effective. But with this one, it's notable to say that it has to be taken at the same time every day. So women mostly will have to set a reminder or an alarm for them to remember to take this pill every day. So every day at the same time. If the pill is late by more than three hours, it is advised. I would advise the woman to employ a different method of contraception for that day that the pill is delayed. So a different method would be a barrier method like condomizing or an emergency contraceptive in case they've um, you know, uh, engaged in any sexual intercourse. So if, they miss, if you miss a pill, if you miss a pill or your pill is delayed, ensure that you use a different, another method of contraceptive alongside taking your pill. Don't forget to take the pill. Even if it's delayed, take the pill, but then employ another method of contraceptive along with the pill. Yes, so that's about the mini pill. Another daily form of contraception is the combination uh, uh, method, which is a combination of two drugs, an estrogen derivative and a progesterone derivative. So this is called the combined pill. Uh, it's, it's very common in a lot of brands. I will not mention any brands, but see your pharmacist or your local, uh, your local chemist or your local pharmacist or your doctor, your gynecologist to advise you on which uh, of these are available in our market. So it is a progesterone derivative combined with an estrogen derivative. So estrogen, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the natural way, is acts to stimulate follicles from the ovaries and to um, stimulate thickening of the uterus in readiness for uh, fertilization and development of a fetus. But the slow release estrogen that is available in contraceptives acts in a different way. It has a negative effect on the follicle stimulating hormone. It diminishes it and it prevents it from um, ovulation. So the follicle stimulating hormone won't be uh, secreted from the pituitary gland so it won't stimulate the ovaries to produce any you know, mature follicles and uh, ovulate them. So slow release estrogen acts, has a negative effect on the ovaries and on uh, the woman's body. So that's how it acts. I'm sure people are wondering how we would use estrogen again to prevent, to, to act as a contraception. Yes, that's how it acts. So, uh, the types of estrogens that are available are estradiol, estron, but mostly the ones that uh, are available in our mark in our you know communities and whatnot is estradiol, which is combined with a progesterone derivative. Yes, so. The combined pill is also very, very effective, 99% effective, and should be taken at the same time as well. So another reminder should be set for this one, ladies, if you want to uh, go for the, for the combined pill. So it's 99% effective, and it's a daily pill. Uh, 
to take you back to the mini pill the mini pill is continuous there's no break in levonorgestrel it's a continuous uh, pill daily dose 0 0.03 milligrams but with the combined pill it's a cycle of three weeks and then there's a break uh, so the pill if you if you were to see the packaging the last line of the pills in there are four lines of seven days so three weeks and then the last line is even a different color because that one doesn't contain any hormones usually different uh, manufacturers will put either just a placebo nothing in there others will put ferrous sulfate just to help the woman with the blood she's about to lose when the period comes through yes so the last line of those pills is there's nothing in there ladies in case you didn't know this there's usually if a different brand you ask your, your local pharmacist to advise you which one has um, ferrous sulfate and which one doesn't in case you need that extra boost um, of iron for the iron you're about to lose in the blood with the menstruation um, yes so with the combined pill there's a break with the mini pill there's no break it's just a continuous dose of hormone therapy yes um, with the side effects of the combined pill include bloating, uh, spontaneous bleeding between cycles, uh, nausea, and acne. Acne because the estrogen. Estrogen naturally is the one responsible for acne at, in adolescence as well as uh, young adults, even through some people throughout life. So that estrogen in the combined pill may cause acne in some uh, women uh, other women have experienced increased blood pressure this one is not a documented side effect for these pills we'd rather call it an adverse drug reaction uh, some women have complained of elevated blood pressure um, heart palpitations when they take the, the pill but the, more, the longer they take it, the more tolerant of it they become. So, yes. So in case you, you feel a bit, um, you feel your heart pal palpitating, palpitating too much, um, you feel a bit restless when you take your contraceptive, see your gynecologist or your pharmacist to perhaps uh, change to a better or a more tolerated um, uh, method for you you may not the combined pill may not be the best one for you so just consult your pharmacist or your gynecologist on this um, in case you're experiencing any elevated blood pressure okay so that is it about short-acting hormonal contraceptives we go to the intermediate acting the intermediate acting most of them are injectables um, most people have heard of medroxy progesterone. Again, a progesterone derivative. This is a type of progesterone um, which is injected into the muscle, either the gluteus muscle or the deltoid muscle. So um, it's injected into the woman's body, um, 150 milligrams in the dose and uh it will last for up to two two to three months about 12 weeks um it's most effective up to about 50 days may go um all the way up to 90 days but consult again your gynecologist or your pharmacist to be able to assess to say uh your body type your weight can carry how much of this drug so that they can dose adjust it to suit your body some women it may even go beyond three months into four months others it the, the effectiveness may uh, be for 50 days less yes so the side effects of medroxyprogesterone 
uh, amenorrhea, which is missing periods, uh, missing menstruation. So some women have reported that they, they don't know if they're pregnant or their periods are just not showing up because of being on this injectable. It's longer lasting, you don't have to set a reminder for this, but then also it's a bit leaves the woman in a bit of suspense because they don't know if it's just the drug or it's failed and they are pregnant. Yes. So other than that, it's over 90% effective. Um, if if the patient works well with the gynecologist or, uh, or the pharmacist and uh, they find a great therapy and uh, therapeutic dose for the patient, it's very, very effective. Yes. The other long last, intermediate lasting um, form of contraceptive is the patch. So this is the progesterone patch. So this is a patch that is placed on the woman's body, mostly the upper arm, under the upper arm, and um, it secretes low levels of progesterone, and it lasts about seven days. So this one doesn't last as long as the injectable, but it's longer than the pill. So if you if you'd rather have a patch, place a patch every 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 week, every Sunday like this one, then the patch may be the option for you. So it lasts up to seven days. Since it's a progesterone hormone, the side effects are pretty much like every other progesterone I've mentioned already. So it would be uh, nausea, headache, dizziness, abdominal pain. Um, and all the others, yes. So that is it about intermediate acting hormonal methods. Now the long acting hormonal methods, these are the implants and the intrauterine devices. So implants uh, are common in progesterone uh, derivatives. So most of them are progesterone hormones in these implants. So the implants are placed under the skin of the arm of the woman. Again, under the arm where it's a bit hidden, but yeah, it still tends to show when you raise your arms and whatnot. So that is why most women won't prefer the implant because of where it's placed and it can be seen by a lot of people but others still prefer the implant because it lasts for up to three years. So three years of not worrying about um, conceiving, um, yeah, especially for those who are trying to child space their, you know, children. They'll prefer the implant, um, not worry about having children for the next three years, and then remove it and then conceive and after they deliver, they add, they have another one placed, and so on. So the implant lasts for up to three years. Um, some women have actually uh, said it has lasted longer than three years. Even after having it removed, they still feel the effects of the implant, um, which means they are failing to conceive. So that tends to happen with the implant. So it's slow release progesterone, uh, which is released over the same three years. So it's over 95% effective. And the common side effects for this one um, include spontaneous bleeding, and which may be excessive, and uh, bloating, um, nausea, and sometimes vomiting if it gets too much, yeah also weight gain so with the implant comes with weight gain that's that's a, a big side effect as to why women may avoid it a lot of them complain of gaining weight after being on the implant yes uh, so i said the implants and the intrauterine devices so inter intrauterine device comes in two ways, the hormonal one and the copper one. So the hormonal one 
uh, is levonorgestrel, the same drug that is available as the morning after pill and the mini pill, can be an intrauterine device if you prefer it. So the intrauterine device um, works to prevent uh, fertilization and uh, ovulation and implantation, just like it works in the emergency contraceptive. So the intrauterine device is actually one of the best methods that are available out there for women. Um, the only side effect is uh, expulsion of the device. Some women have complained that the device uh, got expelled accidentally, but otherwise it's very tolerated very minimal side effects, almost none. Uh, it's 99% effective if used and inserted properly. Yes. Um, then, that is the hormonal intrauterine device, IUD for short, and there's the copper IUD. So the copper, IUD is, the copper IUD is not a hormone, but it's one of the long-lasting uh, methods of contraceptive. I included it on the hormonal side because it is inserted inside uh, the woman's body and it acts as a barrier and also um, acts in the way that other hormones act. So the copper T kills sperm. Um, once it's introduced into the woman's um, vaginal canal and the cervix. Oh, and might I add, the, the intrauterine device is inserted through the vaginal canal and it sits, um, it's T-shaped, so it sits on top of the cervix, inside the cervix, and protrudes through the vaginal canal. So that's how it works. So the copper T, as it's commonly called the copper tea, um, kills sperm. So again, just like the hormonal IUD, it's most tolerated, it has minimal side effects, it's, it's non-hormonal, so it won't have any of those other hormonal side effects like weight gain and bleeding and nausea and vomiting. All it does is kill the sperm prevent it from reaching any egg um, and, co and eventually resulting into fertilization. So the copper tea, the only other um, complaint that comes from women is the expulsion of it or uh, perforation into the cervix. If it's not inserted properly, it may hurt uh, the woman's cervix but other than that it's 99 percent effective and will last for up to 10 years and even beyond 10 years so the copper tea is usually employed when the woman has you know has had the children that she wants to have and she she's not she's no longer wanting any more kids but doesn't want anything permanent or drastic done to her so she will employ the, the copper tea. Yes. So those are the most common and available um, methods of hormonal contraception. Yes. So there are other methods, um, but these are the most common hormonal contraceptive, contraceptives available out there. So earlier I said we're going to discuss hormonal contraceptive, contraception as well as non-hormonal contraception. So let's go into the non-hormonal. So non-hormonal um, is in three types or classifications. So the first one is barriers. The second one is sterilization. The third one is uh, the natural method or fertility awareness. So barriers. When we talk about the barriers, uh, simply what I mean yeah, is condoms. So there's the, the male condoms as well as the female condoms that are available. Um, so like I said, 
like the term itself uh, suggests, they are barriers. So they they act as a barrier between the the woman and the sperm. So sperm won't get um, into the woman, um, whether wearing the female condom or the male condom, they act the same way. So it's not worthy to say that barriers are the only form of contraceptives that also protect you uh, from um, sexually transmitted diseases um, like HIV and other STIs like gonorrhea, syphilis, um, and the like. So it's the only form of contraceptive, contraceptive that has two uses. So it's protecting you as well as preventing pregnancy. So uh, this would be the best option actually if you are trying to kill two birds with one stone. So uh, the other form of barrier is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm sits at the cervix of the woman and also prevents sperm from getting through to the uterus. So the diaphragm is less effective and you may need to use spermicide for it to be highly effective. It may move around in there and you know, it's, it's less effective than the other forms of barriers. Yeah, And this, um, there's some other chemical, which is the spermicide, which helps prevent, which helps kill the sperm as well as prevent it from passing through the barrier. So that is it about the barriers. Um, they are the safest. So the other one, which is the most drastic, is sterilization. So sterilization for both females and males is a permanent, the only permanent form of contraceptive. So in the female, there's a procedure, a surgical procedure performed, which is called bilateral tubal ligation, which involves either cutting or tying the fallopian tubes. So like I said, it's very permanent. Um, once you cut or tie the tubes, um, whether there's uh, ovulation that has occurred, the egg will not get through to um, the uterus or the sperm won't get to the egg to fertilize it yes so this method is employed um, when the woman has had all the kids she wants because it's very permanent she won't be able to have kids again so in the male there's a procedure called vasectomy which involves cutting or tying the vas deferens, which is a sperm duct, which connects from the testes to the penile gland. So once the vas deferens is cut or tied, uh, sperm won't make its way into the penile gland and uh, you know, the, the man will never be able to father children. So with that said, most men, in fact all men, will not go for this procedure. They avoid it. So there's um, almost zero procedures being done, although they are very much offered at teaching hospitals, both UTH and Levi Mwanawasa. But men will shy away from it. Um, I don't know why <laughs> anyway so those are the two methods that are employed in sterilization then um, sometimes women um, will have to go through the removal of the uterus or the removal of the ovaries but these are not voluntary forms of uh, contraception it's because maybe there's a complication or there's a growth or a cyst in the ovaries or the uterus or there's an ectopic pregnancy and they have to remove um, the pregnancy along with the organs. 
so though that's another permanent way of contraception but not voluntary so it's not a method you can go and and ask for in the hospital and say doctor i want you to remove my uterus they won't do it if you don't have a complication or a condition that uh, warrants removing the uterus yes so the last form of contraception on our talk today is the natural method so the natural method or the fertility awareness method this is where the woman will know her days and her cycle and avoid any sexual intercourse on what are called the danger days of the cycle and uh, that way preventing any um, pregnancy occurrence of pregnancy the other way of fertility awareness is um, uh, the withdrawal method where the man uh, stops or the intercourse is stopped right before ejaculation um, although these two methods are very 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 ineffective and will most likely result in pregnancy so these methods are employed at your own risk um, although they have proved to work in some people because they really have a very um, standard cycle but with some women cycles may vary this month it's 28 days the other month it's 30 days so you may never know when exactly you are ovulating unless you really have mastered your body but uh, it's not advised even in the medical setup we not advise it because uh, there's better methods safer methods um, that you can employ um so one more method of contraception uh, is abstinence and it's 100 percent proven to be effective so if you really don't want to fall pregnant abstaining is your best method but if abstinence is not what you can do right now uh, you can employ one of these methods that i've mentioned um, and uh, you can consult your pharmacist and your gynecologist like i said earlier and have safe and you know effective methods of contraception so ensure that you consult before you employ any of these methods i've, I've spoken about ensure that it's a method for you at the stage of, of your life you're in and ensure that um, it works as well so if you even when you start a method, if you feel any discomfort or you feel any side effects that you were warned about or not warned about, ensure that you go back to your gynecologist or your pharmacist and um, seek consult and you know find a way forward for you. So that marks the end of this talk. Um, let me just go through and see if there's any questions from anyone. Maybe we can tackle a few questions. Any questions? We are ready to answer. Okay. It seems there are no questions. I'll give people a few more moments. If you're typing a question, please send in a question, something you are not clear on or something you'd like more detail on. Okay. I guess it was a very clear, <laughs> clear lecture here. So you may be wondering, like, the over-the-counter drugs that you can get. So the oral contraceptives are available at your local pharmacy over-the-counter, especially the emergency contraceptive as well as the mini pill and the combined um, oral contraceptive, the two drugs I had mentioned earlier. Yes. 
so they are available for purchase also available in most government institutions hospitals so if you can make your way there just ask all the questions health workers are always there willing to answer all your questions all your queries all your concerns so make sure that you find out all you can about your body women especially find out all you can find out what works for you what's safest for you make sure you have all your information correct and if you are unable to find a pharmacy or uh, you know a hospital which offers these these services um, you can always download the MedSearch app and look it up. So Med, the MedSearch app shows you uh, which hospitals or pharmacies offer reproductive health services. So once you go to the MedSearch app, just search reproductive health service and it will give you the options of a place nearest to you you'd like to go to a pharmacy or if you'd like to see a consultant in a hospital it will give you all that information so i think this marks the end of our talk today since there are no questions that i can see okay thank you everybody for tuning in thank you for choosing to spare this hour of your night to sit down with me and listen I hope we have picked up one or two things that we didn't know earlier previously and uh, it has opened up your mind to the other things that you didn't know and uh, like I always say um, MedSearch Healthcare Simplified we're trying to bring healthcare closest to you the, the, the patient, the client and Hopefully this has been one of those talks which were great and beneficial. Thank you all. Oh, we actually have a question here. Why is the progesterone only pill preferred over the combined in breastfeeding mothers? Does estrogen have any effect? Okay, there's another question. Okay. So the, the mini pill, which is the levonorgestrel, progesterone only pill, has less side effects, fewer side effects. Um, not necessarily that estrogen will affect the baby. Um, it's just that the mini pill has less side effects. Um, some women, while on the combined pill, have complained of uh, having feeling depression, uh, spontaneous bleeding, and nausea, and vomiting. So all those side effects are avoided or prevented with the mini pill. So that is the main reason why the mini pill is preferred in, in breastfeeding mothers rather than the combined one. Dingile Daka is asking, is there an emergency pill we have on the market that can be taken for up to five days, as you mentioned? Because some women have experienced where they take the emergency pill later than 48 hours, but within 72 hours, but still conceive. <laughs> Well, it's still the same one. Levonorgestrel can be taken for up to five days. But it's according to where on the cycle you were before taking the pill. If the levonorgestrel arrives in the body after implantation, there's nothing the pill can do for the woman. So say the ovulation occurred today and the egg well just to take you back to a bit of biology the female egg will survive for about 24 hours 
in the body before it shrivels and cannot be fertilized. So if ovulation occurs today and intercourse happens within um, the within the 24 hours or even before the 24 hours it will definitely fertilize the egg so if fertilization has occurred today and the woman so after fertilization it takes about two days for the egg to travel to the uterus and be implanted so within the, that 24 hours of ovulation and two days of traveling to the uterus is the three days optimum um, effectiveness. So if it's taken past implantation, the pill won't work. But if the, the ovulation occurred and fertilization has occurred, then you take the pill, even if it's at the fifth day it will prevent implantation so those are the things to, to to look out for so the safest period in which you can take the pill is within those 72 hours so if it's beyond 72 hours it's very risky and less effective but not that it won't work it has worked in a few women but others have still complained even after taking the pill the following day they still conceived so there are those of course with, with every drug you find that there's um, a few who experience failure also some women like I said use the pill excessively and if you use the pill excessively it will stop working and won't be as effective so that is the reason why some women conceive even after taking the pill. I hope I've answered the two questions. Okay, I think we're signing out now. Thank you everybody once again for tuning in. Um, see you next time. Bye.